Hello there. I had uh, recently a uh, a revival of my chest infection. It's still not gone. It seems to be lingering about interminably. And so, uh, because I didn't take antibiotics, I wanted my own body to get rid of it. It's still ongoing. But uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, I have n nothing really to complain about. But I've been unable to do videos for quite a while, as I would have hoped. But uh, this year, as I hoped, as I mentioned last year, what I would like to try and do is less mundane astrology and get more onto some more psychological stuff uh, in relation to the planets, signs and houses and uh, some general basics of astrology in order to perhaps uh, both help people listening uh, with their particular concerns. I would also invite questions uh, through, not about personal charts, but also about the topics that I'm, I'm talking about. Now, today, what I would like to cover is really um, the beginning of the outer planets. And I want to talk about them, about what they are and about what the transits are, particularly in relation to these outer planets. And I'm going to cover Neptune in this particular um, video. Outer planets are generally seen as uh, ambassadors or the symbols of a, a level or state of consciousness up and beyond the bounds of the ego. Now, one could see this in collective terms, in terms of the collective unconscious. Uh, uh, Dr. Liz Green has um, utilized this approach in her, in her astrology uh, throughout uh, several decades. And in my opinion, it seemed to be true that in some way the collective organism of humankind, it's a very Jungian approach of course, uh, can be seen as also a, a, a single psyche. And that, so the outer planets seem to be harbingers of that collective psyche and trends going on within it. If you like movements of the collective organism, because you know Uranus travels around to its own place every 84 years, its complete cycle takes that long. Neptune is 165 and uh, Pluto is somewhere anywhere between 248 and 252 years. So we'll never see uh, in our single lifetime to have the experience of a Pluto or Neptunian return. If we're lucky, we might see a Uranian return. So in, in when we're born with these planets in a particular sign and house, this is really a generational quality. It's, it's a whole group of people born at a particular time and stretching sometimes uh, so Uranus is over seven years, Neptune stays in a sign 14 years, Pluto can go anywhere from 10, 11 years all the way through to 22, 23 years in a sign. And so we're born with this collective trend within us. Now, when we have individual planets in relation to these, then it's as if our personal psyche, our channels, channels of communication or vehicles through which these collective forces take place. Now, that's one way of looking at them, and I think it's a very practical way, and it's one that I'm going to continue on with. However, there are other ideas that these outer planets are not just collective trends, not just of the uh, collective unconscious as such, but also ambassadors of, of energy stemming from other galaxies. Now, this view was um, shown by um, Dane Raja. And what he was saying was that if we have uh, attuned ourselves, if you like, or come up to a certain pitch in our understanding, or maybe our approach to life is a particular of a particular form where we're open to such things, then it's, it's then that the uh, transits of the outer planets uh, seem to take on those dimensions. I mean, Roger was an excellent astrologer, an excellent uh, theorist in astrology, and has left us with many, many books. Whoever did the uh, Rudyard archival project of Kalida.com on on uh, on the uh, on, uh, on the web uh, is to be totally congratulated and thanked for, because on that site they've given freely all or most of all of Rudyard's uh, uh, works. 
you can go on there you can have a look at all of his books and so on and and uh, uh, partake of Rudyard's complete uh, uh, works and his philosophies and everything this is a marvelous thing and I want to thank those people especially because uh, I found great interest and many hours of research reading uh, Rudyard I have him on my shelves of course all the general ones but uh, it, it, he sometimes is a bit heavy a bit difficult to penetrate but his, his essential point was that astrology can be used to look beyond the personality the psychology is to see what energies are flowing through one what, what the seed pattern of the human potential is but up and beyond that to lead us to a certain kind of state of being that he called the illumined path in his uh, book, The Astrological Tip Trick, he talks about the illumined path or the way, the way through, and he sees these energies as passing through us, as part of a, the cosmic order within us. And so this is also another way and, uh, of looking at astrology. And uh, he liked to see uh, things that have a galactic dimension as well as solar system dimension. In his book, The um, the sun is also a star. He reminds us that the sun and thus all the solar system is connected to a larger whole of the galaxy. So that we're enmeshed in the solar system. That is almost our, our collective cosmic, uh, 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 collective solar system. We are as individuals enmeshed within our particular culture. Our culture is in a hemisphere, hemispheres relating to the whole earth or the human uh, life way, the human family as it were. And as such, we are connected also to a series of planets. But all those planets then revolve around a central star of the galaxy. Now, this is called holistic theory, and he was one of the first people to uh, 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 show this and, and demonstrate this, that we're all in capture, in, in, um, caught up in a, in a series of processes and things that relate to larger and larger holes of being. That, uh, that, uh, so this is called holistic theory, something that Ken Wilbur uh, uh, took up uh, uh, tremendously well in terms of psychology and the development, the evolution of consciousness. Uh, his works are great works, fundamental uh, works for any, any ideas about holism, what, how the holistic uh, system works. But Roger was one of the first. And so he sees these outer planets as ambassadors of a galactic dimension, a bringing through of energies from uh, uh, not just from the solar system, but they themselves are coordinated, as I say, around other systems. And so in his interpretation, you see Uranus becomes the um, the collective mind or a, a mind beyond uh, our ordinary human mind and that uh, a kind of universal mind if you like called the mind of God or the mind of a totality of being. Neptune becomes the collective soul, a kind of feeling dimension in which we feel connected to everything and all. Um, a, a, a Neptunian state of consciousness is a non-dual state, an Advaita state, in which, our, in which everything becomes relative. Pluto, of course, is that which, is, which we allow through to transform us from the fundamental roots of our being. It's not just the psychological dimensions of birth and rebirth and, a, and, a, and the experience of that, although it is at a psychological level. It's, it's somehow us and our personal being as a, a vehicle of a transformation of consciousness. And so Rudyard's uh, idea was um, that if we can just get above our individual problems, then we can allow these things to evolve through us and therefore become a, a form of what he called a trans-individual being. He saw that as the natural state towards which uh, it, it, the evolution of individuals uh, are headed. But of course he was very well aware that uh, there aren't a lot of people which we which, will which call distinctly individual because he saw many people still encapsulated or enfolded within their culture and their cultural conditioning and uh, obviously the, the conditioning coming from the family also.
so or, or, or a tradition or a particular form of religion but what he saw is that uh, mankind generally evolves through uh, gradually deconditioning themselves from these different states of being these different forms of identity and eventually as i say to become a trans individual a, almost a, a galactic being as it were rather than be caught up in the the difficulties and the anxieties of individual um uh, uh, enterprises uh, complexes problems and so on yes i think uh, he was a bit of an, an optimist perhaps a positivist uh, wanting and always egging people to get on and move past their individual states that's why he was always a champion of the so-called transpersonal path see tra transpersonal he saw as energies coming through people and allowing them to partake of the individual human psyche uh, uh, um, and uh, the, through our own individual karma our own individual destiny but he was always had one eye on what was actually going on the processes the stuff that would be true the energies that were trying to be fulfilled through our individual psyche rather than just fulfilling ourselves and so uh, this astrology, um, uh, astrological dimension, can be seen as a, as a multi-dimensional um, uh, capacity. It has a multi-dimensional capacity of interpretation through these levels of being, from a galactic level, or, uh, what you might call roughly a spiritual, metaphysical level, through to a self-actualizing level, the individuation process of Jung, uh, how the collective works through us, but how we must also retain our individuality. And then also through the work of Noel Till, which I've mentioned before, uh, uh, to do with how we get on within society, a kind of socio-cultural astrology. And then there's also medical astrology, astrology and divinatory astrology for which we can uh, use strategies for specific problems or even the diagnosis of certain conditions in our body our body mind system so when i come round to neptune i may tap into these various dimensions and interpret them in different ways according to uh, what i feel at the time but i thought i'd introduce these outer planets as dimensions of a, a, a bigger and broader perspective of the human family and it, it, it's in this sense that we can understand transits as not being that personal you see because if these are transpersonal they are collective trends group uh, group culture um, uh, or, or, or the collective psyche as it were there are machinations uh, in the collective psyche movements uh, through, and uh, particular kinds of uh, dynamics or archetypal dynamics coming through uranus neptune pluto chiron there may be even other extra dimensional planets beyond those uh, but for now these are these are the three that are well known what happens in a transit if it comes across a personal place in our chart is that we are we're being asked as it were by the collective organism to take on a particular feature in a particular way and in in order to evolve life on and depending on how we encounter the experiences uh it depends on how well i suppose we function in the world now there may be personal elements to that we may get very caught up in the experiences that we have and uh, and obviously our, our psyche is going to be hit off our, our childhood dynamics are going to be hit off our sense of victimization or a sense that we've been given a um, uh, some revelation or something that we have to give but uh, the important thing about the outer planets is that something is doing itself through so is is doing something is happening through us and uh the particular dimensions of what happened with the descriptions of it depend on the planets uh or, you know if in neptune is going across the sun for example whatever neptune means is using our very life force to make itself known so this is the first important dimension of outer planet transits to remember that whatever we experience about them it's not necessarily personal we are being asked we are being chosen or there is a set timing according to our chart when these these things these experiences these processes that are going to go on in us 
And if we can just remember this perspective, then it's more likely that uh, whatever goes on and the working out of it psychologically or sociologically or even physically, whatever the results of a transit, whatever the experiences, we can understand that these are timings given to us right from birth. And that it is in many ways our dharma, our duty, uh, 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 an inherent condition um, that we must do our best to try and encounter these experiences and transform them from a purely personal level into something beneficial. That's where astrology can come in so useful with a contemplation on the symbols, on what is happening, with uh, deep meditations on them. And so we can, uh, in a way, tie our own individual experience of them and not get so lost in, in the idea of that the world is doing something to me personally. It is doing something through me, which is what the Radhya message is. This is also, of course, the message of Liz Green, that we live in a, in a broader collective human family. And it's through that that we live, move and have our being, that we belong to that. And of course, um, not to get too caught up with these individual senses of um, uh, things going on. And so that we get lost in the confusion of uh, self-victimization or self-pity. Now, of course, that's easier said than done. Everybody has a moon in a sign and everybody reacts emotionally to life in a different way. And sometimes it's easy to personalize difficult experiences. But nevertheless, if we have this broad approach to outer planet transits, then we can uh, uh, somehow have this uh, playing field of uh, activity uh, that we can have a subtle sense that uh, our lives are not just our own that we live uh, and move and breathe in a human family, but also in a cosmic family and per uh, perhaps even a galactic family. And so that these passing um, experiences, these passing uh, things that go through us are in some way connected to the evolution of the whole.